All right, well, let's just get this thing kicked off, huh? So, uh, some of you guys are meeting in person for the first time. Thank you all uh, for, for coming, uh, especially, um, you know, at, at the end of the day. I know it's tough to get here. Everyone, you know, not everyone, most people have jobs now. <laughs> <laughs> you just retire. Um, but uh, a lot of us, you know, are still working. And I know, I know it takes a significant effort to uh, get out here, but and thank you for participating, you know, in the group as a whole. This is really cool. I, I'm really excited about this, right? This time last year, this was not on my radar, right? So it was on, as much on my radar as, as it is yours. But to be here um, today with you guys and to be representing Cornelius and something that I think we've all desperately felt like we wanted a, a hand in, what an exciting opportunity for us to, to have our hand in it, right? And I'm really excited uh, about the adventure that we're about to undertake. Um, you know, it's definitely going to be a challenge. Uh, there's a lot to do. We put in a very aggressive time schedule here. Um, but I definitely think we can do it. You know, and uh, I have no doubt that we can do it. You know, the, the most important part, and we'll, we'll cover this a little bit in the charter, but you know, the, the biggest key success factor in this whole project is the engagement from the community, right? And you guys. Are not only here representing them, but I'm hoping that you're out in the community talking to them when we come back for these additional future workshop meetings. I'm hoping you're going out and asking people and getting feedback and bringing it back with you because that is going to be the number one key success factor. Wayne had mentioned before the town's never undertaken anything like this before with the citizens of the town. So this is a first. And I do think it's unique. And I bet you're going to be hard pressed to go into any other town and find a citizen-driven initiative to help redesign the land use plan. I'd love to hear if it's happened before. I've not come across it, but who knows. But it's unique, I know that. So thank you guys for doing that. Um, I know we'll go around uh, and, and let everyone do um, introductions. We're gonna be working a lot with each other. Um, as, a, as a small icebreaker, um, the one thing that I'll ask you to, to share is when prior to coming here today, did you have any surprises or any, about any conclusions that you came to when you were thinking about Cornelius 20 years from now? Or was there anything that really solidified or crystallized for you? Just one key concept or, or key idea about the town of Cornelius. Um, or just one small fun idea. That you, that you came across that you thought would be really great that we did, you know, in the next 20, 20 years. So um, I know that's a, that's kind of a big concept to think of in, a, in an icebreaker. It's a heck of an icebreaker, but um, you know, if you don't mind, just go around and, and share who you are and what uh, part of Cornelius that you reside in, and um, you know, maybe just a little bit about yourself, what you do or what you like to do, and um, and let's just get to know each other. Who would like to go first? I'll, I'll kick it off. All I right. think I know just about everybody here. Dennis Billadu, third term as a town commissioner, recently retired insurance agent. So I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, happy about Tiger Woods having a good round today. <laughs> so so that just shows us old guys can still uh, get pretty close to the to the pin. Uh, but what I wanted to share, to your point, Michael, I, I spent today in, in Charlotte. I was down in South Park for lunch, uh, doing all those great uh, retiree things. But my gosh, getting around Charlotte uh, made me really uh, realize that Cornelius is where I want to be. Um, I live in the peninsula, uh, waterfront. So you know, life is good for me and Cornelius. I want to make sure that, um, as Michael pointed out, that we not only represent ourselves, but you're hand-picked in terms of the area of this town and, and who you can uh, represent beyond just your, your own personal feelings. And I, I think you'll see that as we go through this exercise. You'll see what the survey is bringing, but also, as Michael said, when you travel around your social circles, um, you know, even if it's not what you believe in, but if you're hearing it, share it with us. And I look forward to uh, some very good sessions. Thank you. Um, my name is Hardy McConnell. I originally grew up in Davidson, left when I was quite young, and uh, my 
parents were still here and my wife said we're moving back and so we kind of ended up here. I live on Mays Road, so actually I really am not part of Cornelius, but I am part of Cornelius. I'm in the ETJ. Um, it's uh, this, Our section is not part of the town per se, but um, everybody who lives in the ETJ area has to follow the rules and uh, building specs and uh, all the regulations that the town of Cornelius sets forth. Um, I have been lucky enough to be uh, asked, been with the planning board for a little bit of time, and um, I have watched Cornelius transform through a lot of different uh, different leaders over many, many years. Um, I'm probably one of Cornelius' biggest cheerleaders. Um, I really I love the city. I love what we have done uh, as far as planning is concerned. Uh, I, people always say, oh, well, Davidson, Davidson. Davidson's got nothing. Davidson has a green patch of grass in front of a library. Other than that, they don't have the culture we have. They don't have the entire, the, the, the citizens here drive uh, our town, where the college drives Davidson. Um, I'm thrilled with the planning, we're controlled planning. Um, we allow builders to build within reason without you know putting them in too much harm's way. I'm in trucking, so I have no skin in the, in the building game. I'm just amazed at how We've been under some really good leadership. Um, I'm really thrilled with the town board who we have in place now to kind of help us with this transition. You say, what does, what would you like to see in, you know, with all the expansion? My thing is we don't have very much more real estate to expand within. So the real estate that we have, let's slowly, you know, optimize it to a real, you know, keep the beauty in class and retain that, um, that feel of a small hometown. And these guys are sick and tired of me always saying how much I love events that we put on like to Wobble Walk. I mean, it takes me probably 50 minutes to walk 30 feet because I have to talk to every one of my neighbors. I love it. It's, we are so blessed to live here in a very small town. I've coached baseball here for years and years and years. Um, know the kids, well, I hate all the kids are grown now. But I mean, I really appreciate you know, the, um, the board putting this together, letting us have a say so, um, and for us to really, you know, keep the the small town um, feel of our community intact, and we don't lose it to outsiders and you know, people coming in and taking advantage of it, of us. And I'm sorry I talked so long, but I apologize about that. that. Appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, my name is John Shaw. I live in Robbins Park. I've got two little kids who both, well, one goes to Washington, one goes to Bailey. Um, I've lived here, my parents have lived here since 99. Um, I've lived in Charlotte since 99, and they moved here seven or eight years ago. Um, so, uh, you know, I've got, uh, I serve on the board of commissioners for Parks and Rec. You know, I, I wanted to be part of this because, you know, I, almost a little bit of a counter. I. When I decided I was moving out of Charlotte was when I was sitting in traffic in South Park. I drove from Valentine to my home in near Park Road Shopping Center, and my wife and I were trying to figure out where we were moving, and I passed a line of traffic for 45 minutes, and I said, we are not moving to South Charlotte, period. So take that to yesterday when I spent an hour and a half in the car driving my daughter to soccer practice and my son to lacrosse practice, and I just am frankly tired of, and that's why I, I think a lot of people are excited about you guys. I'm tired of the direction that things have gone for a while. So, thank you. My name's Kelly Gardner, and I live in Antiquity. Um, I've, my work is in the world of Ayurveda. I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner, which means for people in the West, I uh, help people with digestion um, and nutrition. So. Uh, I, to your question, like, what was a big aha for me when I started envisioning 20 years from now? Um, the, the thing that I see that has people wanting to be here and loving being here is the connectivity. I know there's so much being done with the greenways getting connected, but I envision in 20 years that I can get to um, a place 
uh, one of the Ramsey Creek Park easily on my bicycle because we spent the time to make the connectivity work in the, especially at the crossings. I mean, the crossings are just frightening. So until we really, I just envisioned all of that working really well and smart and that families felt safe walking and um, biking and could get everywhere from Birkdale to here to uh, anywhere on West Catawba and out on the lake that, that it's all just very beautifully connected. And that was a great aha. That's awesome. Richard Pappas. Um, I am from Charlotte, born and raised. I uh, came up here 20 years ago. Um, at the time when I was growing up, um, the lake was just a place where my friends went to vacation when they couldn't afford Myrtle Beach. Uh, it was just a fishing lake. And so it was, you know, not to age myself, but it was a lot different than it is now. And it's even changed a lot over the last 20 years. Um, I work for First National Bank. I uh, work with uh, businesses, a lot of which are in our area. Um, I work with a lot of organizations that are um, collaborative within the Lake Norman, so it's not necessarily just Cornelia specific, but definitely influenced. Um, I'm on the Chamber of Commerce board, I'm the past chair. Uh, I also work with Ada Jenkins, I'm, I'm the Treasury Board of Directors there, and work with an SBA group as well on their board. So I, I definitely work with a lot of organizations that influence as well as clients. I'm not somebody who believes that uh, we need to leave a lot of trees and cows around. I think it's a little hypocritical for people to come here and then say, okay, stop growth now. Um, we, do need, we do need to take advantage of the land we have, but we need to do it responsibly. And I think most people believe that. If we don't, I was on the educational um, collaborative uh, committee for Cornelius, and we found very quickly that our schools are full of kids that aren't from Cornelius and our roads are full of people that are not from Cornelius. And that's going to continue as they grow. Uh, we need to grow responsibly and get some of that because we're going to have to take, take the infrastructure risk regardless. So uh, appreciate this committee coming about. What do I see in 2042? Well, we were promised flying cars, so traffic should not be an issue. Um, obviously, that's probably not going to happen. So I think committees like this and discussions and the board being open to, to the citizen input, I think, is, is really big and key and, and responsible growth. So I appreciate the opportunity. My name is Ava Callender, and uh, I am retired, and I live in Twin Oaks, which is near Smith Circle and Floral. And it's the only senior community that's very affordable in Cornelius. So, you know, we're very proud of that and we welcome the new residents. Um, the first thing I thought of when we got our essay assignment was, I'm 68, I would be 88. I'm so happy that I'm a woman. <laughs> 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 I was so pleased with that. <laughs> and, um, you know, I wrote my essay and, and I've had the opportunity to incorporate the opinions of a lot of East Siders, and um, I've contacted so many folks, and I've spoken to reverends, and you know, so I, I really got great input. So I was able to put a little bit of that into my essay, and so I'd like to just continue doing that because, uh, you know, as you mentioned, I don't want to just represent myself, and so we have an opportunity now to represent our community, and I'm excited about that. So that's what I'm busy doing. Awesome. Fred Westaway, I um, live in Westmoreland, have been here for about, I think, 13 years now. Prior to that, I lived in Huntersville for about 12 years after moving down from Massachusetts. So I've seen what old growth looks like and stagnant growth up there. I see the rapid growth we went through here, both in Huntersville and here. My first time living down here, we lived in Pineville. So I, I saw that explosion before 45 was was finished and I, I have friends that live in Valentine. So I, I see that where you put 100,000 people in 30, 3,000 acres of land or whatnot. So it's, my main impetus for getting engaged now was my kids are out, I've got work, I've got time, and I see us losing balance in our environment. I mean, I see us cutting down trees. We have neighborhoods that the first thing these developers come in and do is cut every tree up. One thing for me is critical is that we need to keep balance. We need to keep 
a certain number of green space along with a certain number of housing, with a certain number of commercial. And we got to have a little bit of everything for everyone. You mentioned the crosswalks today. On my way here, a couple of kids cut right through on a green light across, you know, 115. Right in front of me, I'm like, we have people, users, we have walkers that don't, are either impatient, don't want to cross when they're supposed to cross. By Westmoreland, the new trail, love the trails. But when we designed the trail, we made people cross the busy street instead of building the underway to make the trail just flow naturally. As we design the stuff, we want to have the walking trails and things along those lines. I'm all on board. But we should have that kind of thinking where we keep people in cars and bikes and cars as much as possible away from those potential crashing locations. When I look at Cornelius now, I look at two different things. You've got the west side of Catawba, where we have four lanes, five lanes, we've got to expand it even more. And you hit 77, we've got the diverging diamond that was supposed to prevent all the accidents, and yes, it prevents the left turn accidents going on 77 south. But everything else, it does badly. And then you get across to the east side and you're out to a two-lane little country road, which I love. That feel and how it feels there is what attracted me to, Char to, to Cornelius. That and the cows at Alexander next to my neighborhood. Miss them every day. But while we can't save all the cows or all the farms or all the, the natural historic areas of our towns, we can and should try to save what we can in, in, in balance with, you know, we can't have all this, we can't have all banks, we can't have all fast food, but we need a mix. And that's what got me engaged. Thank you. Thank you for that. My name is Susan Johnson, and before I start, I'm just going to apologize up front because I probably will talk really funny. I got Invisalign yesterday, and I'm still working through it, so just excuse me up front. Um, I am a residential real estate agent in the area. I, I like Richard, am from Charlotte, uh, born and raised, and when I was seven, moved to a small little town called Stanley that had one traffic light. And um, from there, pretty much have lived in the majority of the areas west, south, north, and east of Charlotte. And um, lived in Huntersville for a number of years and then moved to Cornelius in 2011. So I've been here about 11 years now and absolutely love it. Um, I am a member of the planning board um, and like Hardy, I'm very passionate about this community. Um, I love all aspects of this community. I love the fact that you know we can actually be so forward thinking that to consider such a committee as this, um, it just says volumes to Wayne and to our mayor, the fact that we are trying to be um, very uh, forward thinking as far as how we plan our growth. Um, like Kelly was saying, I really love the fact that we are implementing the greenways and creating that connectivity so that in 20 years, we don't have to necessarily use our cars, whether it be on the ground or in the air. Um, you know, we can certainly, you know, bike, walk, wherever, and I love some of the, um, some of the projects that have been approved, and the challenge with the planning board is, you know, we are confined and constricted only in certain capacities to be able to, you know, suggest approval or denial of certain projects. Um, at the end of the day, there are certain projects that I think that we did a very good job of approving, and there are certain projects that were also approved that probably did not work within the constraints of what our infrastructure can support. So there is a fine line between developing infrastructure that will then support growth or the growth then creates the infrastructure needs. So just to your point, creating the balance of how to manage all of that current growth as well as future growth really truly is what I think that we're tasked to do here. And I'm really excited to be a part of this. I am Wayne Heron. I am the deputy town manager. 
And I am a Charlotte native, and I have heard more with Richard and Susan. In my church choir, I'm the only one. There are more people from Ohio than there are Charlotte natives. <laughs> so it's good to have two other Charlotte natives here. But my wife and I also made the decision a while back, we can't live in Charlotte. I can't work in Charlotte. <clears throat> it will stress me out, and I will die. So Cornelius is a wonderful place to be. I choose to work here. I choose to serve the people here, and it's a great life. It is a great and wonderful life. Now, let me talk a little bit about what I've done um, in my work life. I, I've done a little bit. I, I was planning director of Boone for 10 years, so I know open space. I, I know um, about conservation. Uh, that was a great experience. I had the ability to be city manager in Monroe. Uh, high growth, very high growth in Union County. So I come here, and this is, all, this is the perfect world. Now, do we... All of our problems solved? No. Uh, we have challenges, we have issues, but what I really appreciate, back to what Hardy was saying, we got great people here. And that's what keeps me here is the great people. I think I've worked with everybody on this group except John and Fred. So I look forward to working with you guys, but it's good to know and see all the rest of you. I do think this will be a great experience. Uh, I've never been through a land use plan process quite like this. I'm excited about it. I feel like we're starting from the ground up. Rather than trying to fix what we got, let's go from the ground up. Let's see what the citizens want. Let's design something, and then let's move forward with it. Let's see how we can make it work and make it fit. So I'm excited, and I look forward to serving you. I'm a resource here. Call me anytime you need me, and I'll do whatever I can for you throughout this process. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Mm -hmm. Yep, so I'm Mike Osborne, like you guys know. I live down to Time Road in a smaller community called Patrick Purchase. Um, I've never served in this capacity before, but I have served with both these guys on the, on the planning board in the past, if you guys did not know that. Um, we were going for a diverse group. It sounds like we got one. Um, without going too much into, you know, we'll, we'll have this exercise here in a little bit where we share, you know, what we asked you guys to think about prior to coming in tonight. I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. But when I was doing that, um, I took the perspective of, uh, you know, by then I expect maybe I'll be a grandpa, but I, I assume maybe I'll be a grandpa by then, right? So I, you know, I, I took myself on a trip with the, with the grandkids, you know, around Cornelius and, and wrote down what that experience was like. And the big takeaway is, um, for me in that, was similar to some of these things where we've got, uh, you know, the emerald necklace that's tying parts of Cornelius together but we need to finish tying those things together, right? Like, how does that, how do we get from there, how do we get from taking the emerald necklace to a trolley to get to Uptown, or down, or Central Cornelius, whatever, whatever we, Old Town, whatever we, we want to call it, how do we tie that together so that it's functional, usable, enjoyable, right? And then, you know, obviously there's infrastructure concerns and constraints, but going through that exercise, I thought, this could be really cool, right? Like, it's not pie in the sky. Like, you know, some, some of the feedback, you know, that, that we hear is, oh, you know, you're just going for, you know, the, the perfect case, you know, dream world scenario. No, it's not. It's all very achievable. We're, we're in a very, very unique situation in Cornelius where we literally can set a strategy and then put the tactics in place to accomplish it. And I really hope and expect that's what we're going to do with this task force. This is, this is the first day that that, you know, on our path to making that happen. And, and my takeaway from what I saw in 2042 is it's all totally doable. And it is a great place in 2042. It absolutely is achievable. Very exciting. Very exciting place in 2042. And what, what we're able to accomplish. So I'm looking forward to it. Is anyone else a little warm in here, or is it just me? It's so hot. It's hot. Do, Mike, do we have... I don't want people to, to not understand why I'm here. He invited me. <laughs> sure. Anyone can come to... He said Sorry. Come yes. Thank you. So that's why I'm here. I talked to Patrice earlier today about some concerns she had in her area. Look, guys, this isn't a secret meeting, right? Someone wants to come, they can come. You know, I'm asking you guys to be here uh, consistently so we can go through this process. And so we can keep the conversation moving. 
but if people want to come and there's an opportunity for them to participate while they're here, fine. If we're if we're pressed for time and we need to keep the conversation a little bit more limited here, then I'm happy for you guys to meet up uh, with the trees at, at another time or you know whatever whatever. But if we have time for other other people to contribute, fine. This is we're open, right? Open for business. This is this isn't my vision. It's not it's not Wayne's vision, you know, or. Parties or, or anyone's one vision, but together I think we're going to find that we can do something very exciting for this town. And my guess is where we're different, and I know we're going to be different already based on what's been said. We've got some different ideas already. I can tell there's going to be some good conversations. Don't take it personal, you know, in the, like that, right? Like everyone doesn't just because someone doesn't share my opinion doesn't mean that they're right and I'm wrong or I'm wrong. And they're right, there's different opinions. But I, I think we can get to the point, you know, where the output of this is something that we can move forward on and it gets us in the direction that we want to move so that we can achieve, you know, a 2042 that we agree on. And I think right now, and the whole point of this exercise that, that we had to do for today was to say it's really important. Kelly Gardner asked me, well, you know, how do, how do I help with the next five to seven years if I don't know what the next 20, what we're going to be in 20 years, right? How do we do that? It's a great question, right? So, you know, we don't all have the same picture, but through the exercise today, we need to be able to come out with some idea or some vision directionally where we want this town to be in 20 years. And then that's what we're going to work towards for the next five. So I appreciate that. If I could add to what Michael's saying, uh, we have a great resource sitting with us in Wayne Heron. Um, one thing you're going to find is I think if you're at one extreme or the other, you're going to find out what town government's like. Because I think Wayne can share, if you have any point of interest, you can find out what it means from a budget standpoint, from a, to Michael's point, it's, it's something that we can accomplish, but if it's extreme, maybe not. But what we want to evaluate are all of the ideas on both sides of growth, slow growth, you know, get your thoughts on it. Um, but I think you said it well, Fred, balance. Uh, uh, you know, I've, I've been on a board that favored high growth, and I'm now on a board that's looking to slow things down. And I feel like I can fit. Um, I survived the election, so I, 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 think, I think I can see the middle ground that will benefit everyone and hopefully fit with the vision, but it won't be 100% of your vision. Uh, I guarantee you that. Uh, there's give and take, and, and I, I really appreciate the various areas, whether it's east side, business, west side, you know, you, you really have a lot to bring to the table, so I'm looking forward to it. Awesome, thank you. And Wayne, just to check on time, this meeting is scheduled to last until six o'clock. Six o'clock. Everybody's good with the six o'clock close? So I'm hoping to talk more in this meeting, you know, than I do any of the other meetings. I'm really hoping to more or less turn this over uh, to you guys. But today I just want to kind of lay out what the plan um, is going to look like. Um, and then I want to make sure I leave plenty of room for everyone to go and for everyone to go around and share what their vision was for 2042. And at the end of the meeting today, I want to just hit on what we're going to talk about in the next meeting so you guys will be ready for the, for the next meeting. So if you have a right with that, we'll, we'll jump right in. So I've given, uh, we've handed out this um, charter that we created for the task force. So everyone should have a copy of it. The, uh, at the top says Cornelius Growth Management Task Force Charter, right? And what we've tried to do is outline specifically what we're trying to do in here. Now, I know we've hit on it, but I'm sure we haven't missed anything. So if it's all right with you, I'm more or less, and I hate to do this, I'm not going to do this the rest of the time, I promise. We're going to do a little bit of this today, okay? Um, but the, in, in Wayne, if you want, can, do you have this slide as well? Can you just leave this up on the screen so people can look at this while I talk if they want to, or they can follow along as, as I read on here. But I do want to make sure I hit this, right? So the reason for the task force, but is that the citizens of Cornelius want to contribute to the vision and tactical direction of the town. This was confirmed at the 2021 town election when the residents elected four commissioners that ran on the platform of amplifying the citizens' voice. 
the citizens have expressed concerns over infrastructure keeping pace with the growth and its impact to the quality of life of Cornelius Hoffman. Right? So creating a land use plan that is current and citizen driven will protect and enhance the quality of life of Cornelius. The land use plan serves as policy, important word, the land use plan is policy for medium range five to seven years that keeps us aligned with that long term vision. Land use policy serves as a guide for residents and developers alike as to what they may expect for approved land use designations over the next five to seven years. And it illustrates the preferred direction of the town as described by its current residents. Okay? The land use plan should be revisited in five to seven years. It should not be updated on an ad hoc basis to meet proposed development. Okay? The proposed, uh, the purpose of the task force, the task force will interact with our citizens and recommend changes to the land use plan that reflect broad feedback. First meeting is today. Final rec recommendation we present to the town board um, with a target date of its first operating uh, board meeting in August of 2022. So uh, scope is everything under control and Cornelius is under scope. Uh, one thing that we're not going to consider as in scope is what's happening outside of Cornelius. We can't control it. We're not going to worry about it. I mean, we, we know if we have traffic on roads today, we're going to address it. But we can't worry about what other towns are doing in terms of growth. We, we have no control over that. Okay? Um, One second, Michael. Yep. Can we assume that we really don't have control of infrastructure needs? We can make requests, but we don't really have control because they're at the NCDOT level? For where we currently are today, we could not. But if you decided, for example, that you wanted Cornelius to be 80,000, and we knew that we were gonna have to take, it's gonna take 20 years to get those roads in place, then it may not be something that you decide you want to do if you don't think the infrastructure comes about it. Correct. So we have the ability, yes, I mean, it's it's not an assumption, it's true. We can lay the facts out there that it's gonna take 20 years to get a new road. Like, we absolutely are gonna put that out there. This is a, this is not an exercise, you know, just for fun, this is for, for real, and we have to, Consider those factors for Correct, because the, the current projects that are yet to start are going to not finish within this five to seven years. Yeah, well, we'll have to take that into consideration as we plan in the next five to seven years. This is the tactical approach for reaching our strategic direction, and we can consider that in this conversation. It's really a great question because and this is a little bit maybe to what Susan was saying earlier, sometimes like land use, when they have, uh, when, when they, uh, the planning board, when they're given a decision, you know, that's not something that, that they've been guidance to, to consider in their decision because it's already reached them. They can't control that, right? But when we set the land use plan, we can say that a project's not a fit for the land use plan if we determine that here for the next five to seven years. The planning board does have the discretion to say it's not a fit for the land use plan. And that's how that can be impacted. Then sure. once, once we set that policy, it'll be enforced on a consistent basis, right? That's the point. Yeah, because that's the issue is when there's not consistency and everything's arbitrary yep. and dependent on who gets elected or whatever. I, I'd like to see something a little more consistent. Mm -hmm. I think this plays a big, big part of that. I think that's the point. And, you know, Doing this from scratch, right, is kind of what is going to enable us to say we have a look at everything. Like we are going to look across all sectors of the town. We're going to look at it as a whole. So you know, not one area at a time. So when we're done, we ought to feel good and ought to be able to say we considered every part of the town and this is the direction that we want to go. There would be no reason to look at things on a project by project basis after we walk out of here. I think that um, to your point about DOT, I think it might be, I don't know if it's a Wayne question or y'all question, um, to educate this group on a high level of how that works within the constraints of what the town does versus what DOT does so that everyone has a baseline to understand it's not just what we say about what we want to do, but there are other factors that we have to consider. There's a follow-up I have to that to add on to 
we'll we'll talk about that, and, and Wayne will have some uh, input. Like we'll one of the things I think is uh, we ask everyone to consider their their preference of you know slow growth and medium growth and you know aggressive growth and what the trade offs or impl implications are for each, and that's a great uh, Wayne question for those things. And we'll, we'll definitely have some of those conversations. Uh, I, I think that will build up the, the discussion. So when we say we have too many banks, we can turn to Wayne, and Wayne can give us the boundaries that we're within today. Sure. Or if we need more roads, the boundaries of, yeah, we could build our roads. We're building two roads now as a town. And if we say here as a group, and we think that the feedback says we need to do more, Wayne can help us with the consequences and what the cost. So then that's at the end of the day where we get back to balance and say, okay, this is where we want to be five, seven, 20 years. This is realistic. This may not be so realistic. But at least we have Wayne here as our, our source with great experience to guide us through some of those decisions. Yeah, most of my, most of my basis since the start, I had a method of why I was bringing up the roads parts first because it leads into infrastructure. And it's, it's another infrastructure question that's showing its head based upon the last board with all the um, multi-family multi units they added on without respect to do we have available water and sewer to add to that to even be built, begin constructing them. Those are constraints that have to be considered. So if someone says, again, if someone says, I want 80,000 people Cornelius, I want it south, south Park on, you know, you know, here, then you have to ask that question. Can we can we support it? You know, or you know, okay, that's the direction we want to go. We just can't get there that fast. So we might highlight. You know, I don't know what everyone's going to read or, or say when they when they provide their vision for Cornelius 2042. But if that's the direction that we want to go, then we have to plan for it, right? We absolutely have to plan for it. We'll have to give uh, that advice board and we'll have to know which direction do we want to go. If we're going to do that, then there's no reason to invest in a park if we're going to tear it down and do something. I, I was only bringing those out as those are areas where we have to liaise yeah. with other divisions of either Charlotte Mecklenburg or NCDOT to, to pull off any type of land use yeah. ideas real, we have. Real considerations, absolutely real considerations that we need to have as part of this conversation. And I'll just tell you, it's, this is kind of crazy, not even, this is not Cornelius, but Concord literally has so many um, projects on their books and they cannot actually even make them happen because their um, sewer and water is at full capacity and now they're trying to figure out exactly how that they can get these approved projects to move forward and what they need to do and I definitely don't want to see that happen with us. Um, because I do feel like that we've had so many projects approved as of late that just to get these current projects that are already on the books and then consider other future projects, I mean, that's certainly a concern. So when we get to that visioneering part today, I'll have Wayne elaborate on that a little bit more. Is that okay, Wayne? All right, let's, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to get through the charter. Sorry, sorry. this is probably the least exciting part of it, but it's important that we cover this, right? So one of the things that we did is you know, we try to identify what are the risks going into this, like what are the things that could cause a risk that would impact the success of this project? Like the risk to the to achieving the highest level of success that we could have. So we try to identify uh, and address these the best we can. Um, and I, I hope we've done it. And if anyone sees any risk that we haven't identified or addressed um, or that we're exposed to that, that could impact our success, then please share it. But uh, we try to address it each of these, right? Uh, in advance of that becoming a problem, right? So too narrow a focus could cloud overall vision. Sufficient time may not have uh, been provided to meet the deadlines. Time commitment that we're asking for you to volunteer is too much to ask. Getting sidetracked on issues not tied to the land use plan could cause delays. Uh, not getting enough diversity of thought may not fully consider the impact to the key stakeholders. The vision or desired outcomes are not compatible with constraints and or Right? The final product does not do enough or does too much in effort to protect quality of life. Not enough citizen input to amplify the voice of the Cornelius citizen. Uh, I think we've addressed each of those the best um, in a 
that they've all been addressed. If anyone sees it, that something is exposed that, we, that we're not addressing or haven't addressed, then no, these are things that we're aware of, and let's get back to addressing them if they're going to cause potential issues in our outcome, um, in the success of the outcome and the usability of our outcome. The benefits of doing this, um, of having the updated land use plan with the citizen input, the updated land use plan reflects current constraints and opportunities. The updated land use plan reflects the direction supported by current residents. The updated land use plan provides direction to developers, citizens, elected officials, and town staff. The updated land use plan keeps us moving in the desired long-term direction by providing a designated or a design desired outcome that considers all town constraints. This is what is often missed when projects are judged or looked at when they're looking at their own as they come up. So this is to both of y'all's points. This is to the consistency point, you know, that uh, Mr. Pappas was asking, and to the question you're asking about constraints. The absolute, both things have to be considered, right? The stakeholders, okay. So it's important to understand and include individuals or groups that have an interest in the decisions of or activities of the town. Without understanding how these decisions impact the shareholders, it would be difficult to anticipate impacts of our decisions. We have to consider how the decisions we make in this room impacts all these stakeholders. Not just each of us individually. We have to think about how it impacts everybody. And the, all these key stakeholders, the key stakeholders are the residents, according to this, right? The neighborhood leaders, the business owners, the community groups, the town board representing all, because they, they represent all the key agencies that are supporting the town, the fire, the police, you know, um, uh, you know Electro City, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, the planning board, the town staff. Um, we have to consider all of each of them as stakeholders and how our decisions will impact them. So the team, we've done our introduction. You guys are our team, right? And as well, we welcome, you know, really a big part of this, you know, is, you know, maybe in our case, we have nine people here. It's our 10th man, right? So the rest of the residents in Cornelius is, is our 10th man in this, in this effort. What we've put up on the screen there is the approach that we're going to take to take on. This is a massive undertaking, right? If you, if you think about it, it can be almost overwhelming. How are we actually going to do something that we're going to be able to implement? Uh, well, I really believe taking this approach, we're going to be able to do it. I think we're going to be able to do just that. What, what we're going to do, and, and this, is, this is the overall approach, we're meeting here today to review the charter, make sure everyone's on the same page as far as that goes, answer any questions about the charter, and to get started with, um, you know, the future state, future and current constraints and gaps. When we'll get into that when we start talking about the vision uh, for the next 20 years. And then after this, we're going to have workshops. So we're not going to be sitting around the table most of the time. We're actually going to have workshops. So the vision for that is we're going to have a focus on workshops for what we call land use designation. How do you plan on using the land? How is that? How are we going to designate that land? Right. So I envision we'll get together, split into two groups. We'll equally have Cornelius divided. Uh, each meeting will only take a portion of Cornelius. It'll be too much to do it at one time. So we'll come in here in a workshop. We'll have two portions of Cornelius, the same portion up in two places. Have two groups work on each of those sections where you're going to identify what you think the land uses should be for that portion of Cornelius. And we're going to try to simplify that process. We have color coded process. We're going to highlight on different descriptive pages what the land uses are. So pretend for a second this page is purple. On this purple sheet, we're not going to name it anything, but it's going to have primary designations of land use on there. And associated with that are going to be some stickers that are also going to be purple. So if you like what you see on this page, in, for a certain part of Cornelius that's on the map we're working on, you're going to go to the map and you're going to put that sticker on that map. And you're going to work with your group because you're going to have different opinions about what you're doing and why you're doing it. And you're going to work within that group to get to the best final um, display that, that you guys are able to agree upon. And then a member from each group is going to report that out to the other group and to whoever might be participating in, in watching, and just share with everyone, why did you come to that conclusion? Why did you want that? Why is that what you decided? 
we may have two different report outs. And if we do, we may need to go back and do another iteration. Because you just want to poke our heads in, guys. Sorry. Yep. How are you? <laughs> we'll keep it down in the next round. <laughs> and you know, this, you know, so it might need another iteration to drive those results closer to one map that this group can live with and, and present. When that's done, what we're going to ask, this is a big ask, a real big ask. We're going to ask for somebody to represent the group, go to that a port, a, a location from that part of the map, and go out and do a quick report out on site, basically, to the town as to what some of the key takeaways were from that meeting. And we're going to share that with the citizens for feedback. It's scary, right? Scary, right? But it's OK. That's what we're here to do, right? So um, trust in yourselves, trust in the feedback you're giving coming in here, and you're gonna do great, right? I, I believe it'll be fantastic outcome. Um, when we get feedback, it's okay, right? It's going to be okay. We're gonna get feedback, that everyone's gonna be happy, but um, you're gonna see that what you've done is going to be representative of what you're hearing as well. And if it's not, it's okay, because when we get that feedback, we'll take it. And we'll have another iteration until we get it the way that we feel like it needs to be, right? Is everyone comfortable with that process at, at the end? Now, here, this is gonna be really key. That sounds great, and we're not talking about a lot of real technical aspects. As we do the land use designations, as you decide you want this to be a retail area, or a residential area, or a residential with retail area, or whatever it is you're deciding with your stickers, we're not gonna get super technical at first. So we complete the map, we're just gonna say, this is, this is how we kind of want to use the land. Then the next phase is going to be similar in terms of workshops, but it's gonna be a little bit more technical. It's gonna be more like, what are the characteristics of these color-coded pieces we put on the wall? How dense of a population do we want there, right? We want one house per two acres, two houses per one acre. What does that look like? We're gonna get a lot more technical on that last piece and that's how it's gonna tie it up. That final piece between the two of them will be the direction that we give the town for what we want it to do, okay? That is what we intend on using for policy for the next you know, five or seven years. Yes. Do we have um, the potential to influence policy regarding uh, things like how many cars per unit? Like I think we're at 1.5 now, but that's not necessarily realistic. But it it Im it impacts land use. Like parking spaces per. Yeah. Especially you when we're talking. When, when we go back in on the technical side. Mm -hmm want to make that part of it if you're like I like this but only if we have four cars per parking instead of five or only if we have ten instead of four if you don't see a card that represents that or you know if we don't make something or something like that doesn't exist then you can share that and that can be part of that you can share that that if everyone agrees that's part of it then that's part of it that will be the technical aspect that will come after we do the land use designation. So if it doesn't happen, it's not on the list already, you want to add it, and it's a key component, then we're going to add it. Okay. One other question. Will we have a like an aerial view of this? Of what the map uh, looks like? Well, we talked yeah. a little bit about that. Um, what do you all want? I mean, I think that what I was planning on doing was giving you the roads, similar to this, and having this printed up into quarters. Uh, with a large printout with, with the roads included. I don't know if want, we can have the buildings and things like more of the uh, satellite view. Should we can we use our current components yeah, as say, plan Do you want to go that route? I don't want anything that's already. Uh, you want to build you can use, not. Well, you can use the maps that are created if they're blank. That's what I mean, yeah. You, you can at least see the parameters. If you, 
Yeah, we we can. My and I was telling Wayne earlier, I'm all for reuse if we already have something like that built. Does this fine. include already approved projects not yet built? No. That's what I'd like to see when we're looking at it. I want to be able no. to because see because we don't have any. We, we don't have any sway in that. They're that's, already approved and yeah. whatnot. But so I would well, like to see we're how not that going to, fits into you know, what's. You can ask. So when you're doing that. So we're not at that place. Like, for example, do they even know where rural preservation is? Do they know what rural preservation is now? When, when we, I don't know that they need to. So that's a choice that we had. If you want, we can have that as a resource available for you. Um, but you'll be able to see that it's rural preservation. What I'm not going to do, what I don't want to do, and I'm going to urge you guys, if you feel differently, we can go in different direction. I'm going to strongly urge we don't get into any technical terms in this until the town can put the technical terms on it, then we're done. What I'm hoping to say is we want this land is vacant today. We want this land to be vacant tomorrow. This land is parked today. If it's already parked, we want this to be parked tomorrow. Or this land is vacant today and we want it to be apartments tomorrow. I am much more interested in what you guys want to do with it. As a resource, we absolutely are willing to give you, if you want to see what exists today, what projects are already proposed. I'm not trying to hide that information at all. But when we go up to the to the wall to propose what our vision is for the next five to seven years of land use designation, I think that um, I don't want us to get too hung up over whether or not there's a project already planned for that or not. Because we can put the land use plan in Place and it can still be different than what is currently there. So if anything is done in the future, it will reflect what you've decided that you want. One thing I'll add that I think is important to do it that way, and just refer to the land use map yep. real briefly. This right here is the Alexander Farm. Yep. It's hashed out. It's in a category called to be determined. Well, if we would have determined that, the Alexander Farm came back on three different occasions over six years. If we would have set a policy at any time in that range, we could have or may have done something different. Well, that's not to say what we did was wrong, but we could have done something different if we would have established a policy. But we just never chose to. Um, and I would also say we're in a market because of pandemic and things that are going on in the land use world. Things can be torn down and rebuilt much quicker than what you ever imagined. So my thing is put the policy the way you want it. So when that teardown occurs, you get what you want. You, you're not just getting what you feel like you have to be stuck with. So I have one, maybe this is like a procedural question, and I'm just gonna use this as an example because it's, you just mentioned it. So we come up with this new plan. There's guidelines in place. Does that actually stop things from getting rezoned? Because that's where I get, so if you've got a farm, so right now you have a farm, right, that was a farm and now it's a discount German grocery store. Like, how is that zoning changed and what, is that something that could happen? It will not change that zoning. But what often happens in the development world is that property can change hands four times before it ever gets developed. By the time it gets to the fourth developer, he might say, well, that original plan is out of date. I need to be planned. So he's going to come back in and ask me, what's the policy today? And he has to abide, or she has to abide by the new policy. And so they'll make decisions on how they ask, or they'll make decisions, do I stick with what I got back eight years ago? Uh, very often it's not economical to stick with what you got eight years ago, because they have a lot of changes. It changes very fast. So they'll make decisions based on your current adopted policy. So that's why it's very important to stay on top of your policy and make it what you want it to be. But it doesn't stop that. So if we just not had a policy in the past, is it time? No, we do. Uh, we do. But as, as Commissioner Osborne and Commissioner Bill do have said, these policies are only really good for about three to four years. And we're not updating ours every three to four years. Now, the current policy we have is a 2014 policy. Believe it or not, that's out of date. Now, to the planning board and the town's credit, we started an update last year, but because of election and different things, we're moving in a little bit different direction. That's okay. 
but we need to get a full update of the plan, have a new policy, know where we're going over the next five years. I guarantee in five years, whatever you do today, it'll be out of date. And somebody's going to have to come back and redo it again. That's how quick land use policy goes out of date. A couple of quick questions. So we talked about getting citizen input, and you tend to hear complaints that don't necessarily reflect the masses. So I'm wondering, first, how we determine what really represents the masses or what may be more individual issues. And then the second question I have is how much emphasis are we going to put to the property owner rights who bought a property under current zoning and then we change things or we influence change. So those would be my two questions. Those are very important. I would respond to that by saying if this group does a really a stellar job, people will know the vision for Cornelius. So we'd have a clear vision of what should go on each property. And, and to your point, John, I think what we get into now is conditional zoning where the developer comes and tells us, hey, this is what we want to put in there. You know, and they sell that the other way around rather than having the town respond. One of the, one of the uh, points I made at the last board meeting was, I hope that we have more than 1,000 people come back with information saying, yes, I agree, no, no I don't agree. Because we're currently at 32, 33,000. To your point, if we listen to 200 people, then we, we really don't have a broad feel for what the vision of Fort Cornelius will be. So that's part of our responsibility, a big part, is getting out there a broad net to get folks to come up, come to the table. If you don't like what you're hearing, bring it on. Because I think at this point, maybe it's the format. We have maybe two dozen uh, responses so far to the survey, mm -hmm. and a couple of them are kind of goofy. You know, I'm going to start filtering those out when they say, you know, the Russians dropped the bomb on us. I don't filter that out. That was, actually, that was a great laugh that I had. There. I mean, there's a reason they call it the silent majority, right? right. Yeah. Well, there, and there's some other. And we're, we're looking at ways to reach you know, reaching more people. Like, we have to move, we're moving fast. You know, I'm, you're going to hear me say that a couple of times. We're, we're moving fast. This is what we have to. I mean, with, you know, if you take too long, it, it, won't get, it won't ever get done. You know, we've got people waiting for us to make decisions, so we definitely need to go. But we're looking for ways to reach into the communities and get that feedback, right? Not not just through, you know, Facebook or, or not just through uh, the internet, but we're also trying to take advantage of some of the other initiatives that this town board has taken on, um, where we're reaching out into the neighborhoods. The Neighborhood Advisory Council uh, is growing very fast. We're hoping to reach lots of people, you know, them where we can, uh, using different tools that have never been used before. So uh, we're looking into a lot of different ways to get more feedback, um, but using, uh, you guys to reach out and talk to people and listen to people. I was, I was at a kid's uh, cross game. I could hear people talking about Cornelius. It was great. You know, like, to me, that's feedback. They were, they were, they were doing this exercise, <laughs> whether they know it or not. I don't know if they knew it or if it's, if it's burned it. They were doing it, and I and I could hear it. It was, it was fantastic. So, bring the feedback. We we'll use as much feedback as, as we can get. You know, it's not just the loudest voice, right? Everyone needs to. You know, people, I hope people feel comfortable in providing you. I've seen some good feedback. The people that have been responding, I've seen some great feedback so far. I want to encourage people to continue to respond. Uh, people, you know. This is a this is a unique chance for the town to participate. I really hope citizens uh, engage. So, how about the question about um, consideration to property rights, property owners' rights? I mean, I, I understand that you don't want them controlling necessarily coming coming to us on a conditional use and driving the purpose in all cases. But what about stuff that's already kind of in in talks and works and were specifically bought for a certain purpose? I, I, wonder how you treat that if you change the rules at some point you've got to make decisions yeah. right so if you change the land use for that piece of property I mean what kind of consideration do we give to the property owner well when we make decisions our decisions that's been mentioned multiple times in here will consider constraints and as citizens of Cornelius we also have rights yeah. to not be sitting in traffic for 45 minutes or to not send our kids to overcrowded schools Amen. or this and that. Yeah. We have rights too. We are property owners or citizens of Cornelius and we have those rights as well. 
Yeah. So, you know, we need, they are stakeholders, and I mentioned in here, we need to consider stakeholders and the impact our decisions are going to have on these stakeholders, right? There needs to be a consideration, but we are also, all residents of Cornelius are impacted, and they're also stakeholders. We have to balance those things, right, and, and understand it. Understand the impacts those people when we're making those decisions. It's not, it's not a frivolous impact. When we make these decisions, there's going to be ramifications. Someone's not going to be happy sometimes. So, so to that point, sorry. Um, as we're going through this, does it behoove us to kind of put a weighting on each of those as we're going through it to say, look at our stakeholders and say, you know, for the property owners, it's a nine out of a ten, but for the other owners. So therefore, we can kind of stack rack and give it up. I do risk management, so I, I I look at that kind of say to say, how do we weigh these to see where we come into that amount that balance point where we're now more towards the middle versus weighing heavily in favor of one to the detriment of another. I think that as as a group, you're, you guys are free to investigate how you want to analyze the impact of, of what you do. And we might have different things to consider when we get into the discussion on the map. You're going to have those conversations. That's going to be part of the conversation, right? So, you know, whether you put it on paper as to how you weighed it or whether it comes from a feeling, some people are going to run off the feelings. Some people want to see it by numbers. I think you guys are welcome to bring those perspectives to the table and share when you do your report out. Why did you come to these conclusions, right? We, we considered the stakeholders. This is where we came down on this, right? But I do want to make sure that it's clear that I, I personally believe that the, the landowners and the citizens of Cornelius also have rights. Even if I, I'm not the direct owner of that property, I have a right to, to make sure that it's a safe town, that the fire and police are able to do their jobs, that we're not understaffed in the police department. Right, and you know, and the, and the buyer has the right equipment to, you know, respond to an issue if it happens. And if they're properly staffed for the for the development, that the, and the you know, when the toilets flush, stuff goes away. And it's, I mean, I have that right, also, to make sure that we're in a position for our town, you know, to provide those services. I think. We have that right. You have that responsibility, right? Right, because you're elected official. Right, so it's even a higher regard. That makes sense. Right. I get it. It's and a I, balance. It's and a I balance. think, and I'm making an assumption, so make sure I'm assuming correctly that whatever has been approved and whatever is currently in place to your to go back to your question will be grandfathered in. However, for this would be for anything new from this point forward. It will, be, it will be our policy. The land use plan is policy. And it will be our policy moving forward. And add to the point, we're saying grandfather in for current owners or current? So anything that has been approved up until this point, like anything, any new projects, any new proposals that, that has been approved up until this point in time, they are still able to move forward with whatever their plan was. But the gray area is like Wayne said, they might come back and tweak right. it, and then... But then well, that's where then it, but then it, in my perspective, then it would not be grandfather any longer. Right, that's exactly right. Okay. But that's Wayne, gray area. just to make sure we're, we're really clear on this. <clears throat> so if they change, they haven't happened. If something was approved under a conditional zone, then the conditions would have to be met, whether it's for the current owner or for a future owner. But if the conditions are met, Wayne, correct me if I'm wrong, then it can be a future owner with the same conditions being met, met can do the same building or the same development. If the conditions that were previously set are still met. If it's nothing new, right. then it, 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 it changes. I'm trying to use an innocuous example. I wouldn't be anything controversial. I'm in QT. Let's say this group decides that Catawba and Holiday Lane should be park lane or rural preservation. Well, you can set that policy. So if QT ever decides that the building's falling down, we're going to tear it down, well, they have to do rural preservation if they want to do anything in the future. So they'll have to make a decision. Do I want to keep what I have? Uh, and, and people make these decisions every day. Do, do I keep it? Do I repair it just enough? 
or, or do I tear it down and move it in a totally different direction in compliance with today's policy? Now, that's an extreme example, but mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to use anything controversial. <laughs> like, I don't know if there's an answer to this question, but one thing I think that's it's communicated, it's not very well known as the budget situation of the town and where things kind of come to a head five, six, seven years from now, and the fact that without commercial and residential growth, then taxes either go up or budgets need to be cut. Yeah. So how much are we going to talk about that as it relates to town growth? How much should we even consider it, or how much are we going to talk about it as it relates to town growth? Jim, we do, we are going to run out of time, so we are not going to probably be able to share our vision Today. Can we? Are you guys okay with pushing that to the next meeting? The good, the bad, the, that's the bad news is we're already pushing something. The good news is it'll actually get us, give us more time to get more feedback from other citizens on that, and then we'll use the rest of this time, Wayne, if you want to answer that question. That's to me. That's that's we're in this conversation about trade-offs, right? Mm -hmm. Wayne, can you share? Can you spend some time talking about those trade-offs for for a, a slow growth? Uh, meet moderate growth and aggressive growth and what those trade-off considerations are. And can we then talk about uh, what we're going to do the next time we meet? Sure. Okay. And actually, the document I have on the screen you have in front of me. And uh, this was a request of Commissioner Billaby to give you a baseline of key segments of uh, things that the town board discusses regularly, like the current tax rate and our budget. Parks, recreation, economic development, public safety, traffic, schools. So let me talk a little bit about the current tax rate. Um, our primary goal is to achieve revenue that can meet our needs. Um, so I, I want to come in and say that's not necessarily the tax rate because growth impacts revenues, value of existing properties impacts revenues, how old the building is impacts revenues. So while land use is a very important factor, it's not the only factor. So what we try to do is give you baselines here in three categories, low, medium, and aggressive growth. Um, and, and just to give a high overview, um, the town board just heard this at the budget retreat. You know, we list out every need that every department and every citizen has expressed to us, and we put that in the capital plan. Well, based on talk about operating expenses first. We're like any other organization. Those go up every year. They never go down. A gas doesn't go down. Uh, you know, all the things that you need to do for your employees don't go down. So operating expenses go up every year. We look at our natural growth to figure out how much we can fund capital expenses. Uh, we have a lot of debt coming on because in order to build these roads, it, you know, I go back and tell you how old I am. Back in the olden day, DOT would build a road and pay 100%. It's not that way anymore. In today's world, if a town wants to compete on a statewide level, you have to put in anywhere from 25 to 45%. So we're issuing about $42 million of debt over the next three to five years, which adds to our what we have to budget for. So what's left when we look at the capital plan in order to build a new park or in order to buy a fire truck or to buy police cars. Um, growth helps us fund some of that. Now, I, I don't like to use growth as the main factor in how we grow our revenues. I'll be very careful because I'm not a politician here. And these guys have tough decisions. But we have the lowest tax rate for a city of 32,000 people of any city in the state. A lot of experts come in and tell us, well, you're a wealthy community, just raise the tax rate. It's not that easy, and these guys will tell you. You guys know it too. Uh, I had to have a meeting at the fire department the other day, and I was talking about the implementation of the transition plan. And the firemen were all like, well, yeah, we want more firemen, but don't raise our taxes. So, I mean, that's the first thing you hear from everybody. Uh, so it's very difficult to balance the growth and development that is needed to get natural growth it is a part, and we do need to think about it, but we also need to think about the fact that we have the lowest tax rate, and how do we balance that? And, and just like everything we talked about today, it's a balancing act. Uh, we do need some growth in order to grow naturally, 
have revenue. We need to do things that enhance the value. Uh, we have a lot of regulation in place that is promoting single family, such as on the lake. Uh, we don't restrict their height, we don't restrict a lot of things they do, because that's where we get a lot of our value, is the lake homes. Uh, matter of fact, the lake homes bring more value into this town than the businesses do. A lot of people don't realize that. We're one of the few towns that bring in significant revenue off of major residential. Other towns don't have that benefit like what we do. So those are all things we have to balance. Uh, I did that real fast. I hope that was a decent explanation. So, uh, can, can we also it? expect to see um, revalu we're what, halfway through a period of revaluation and if you're like me, you look at Zillow and can't believe what they say my house is worth. And so can we also expect a bump in four or five years or three, three or four years when that gets redone? Well, that will be a decision the town board will have to make. Under North Carolina state law, when you're re-evaluated, we're required to publish what would oh, be lower yeah. the tax rate to yeah. keep it the same. Yeah. And then the town board has to make a decision whether they want to go above that to increase revenue. Yeah. And, and that's really no different if they would increase taxes in a normal year, although people tend to accept it in the rebound year. Because the other municipals are doing it too. And, and the other consideration, John, is that um, you know, depending on the type of growth, it doesn't necessarily make the town have, you know have a net increase in revenue because our expenses go up. So you know, the maybe natural tendency is to say grow, and we'll grow our way into more revenue. We're going to solve our revenue problems. That's not necessarily always the case and you don't necessarily get more revenue with more density or anything else the revenue may not change it's only been up like on like one percent annual percentage for the last few years right and now the re revenues the overall revenues have only gone up like one one well this year what we advised the board to retreat we're going to grow at point six the, the largest source of the revenues is the value of, of the land not uh, what we get from sales revenue or retail revenue. And that's a much smaller portion. And then the, the consideration, the question that, that I would always ask is, well, can we make more money if it's you know, a bunch of apartments, for example, we have a bunch more people living there, wouldn't we make a lot more money? Not necessarily. Not off the value of the land necessarily, and not necessarily as a net result of the revenue. So maybe a little bit contrary to what, what your intuition might be telling you on that. And those are good questions that we need to make sure we continue to have those conversations. It's a really good question. It's a really good question, for sure. All right. Anything, any other questions about, the, about that portion of it or about what we've talked about so far? You know, it, it, it almost, feels circular when we start asking the questions about you know, what is the output of this group. When you think about it, we really want to, you know, so said earlier, Davidson is known as what? Maybe a college town, a little bit more liberal. Cornelius is what? When, when you when you answer next time we look at that 2045 exercise, what are we going to be known for? Because we're we're now being awarded one of the best towns in the country. How did we get there? You know, how did what are what are we now known for? And then we can solve for some of that. Okay, how do we pay for it? Is it realistic? Is it not? And there are trade-offs. So do we grow more businesses? Do we allow more population? But what do we envision this town to be noted for? What is Huntersville known as? Known for? You know, so it's it's kind of that that we're solving for, and we can we can get into the technical piece the further in we get. I don't know that Huntersville has that defined any better than we do. Okay. At least we have the art center, so we can say, hey, we're the next NOTA or something. But, but Huntersville, we're going to have industrial growth. We get to determine that in this room, guys. This is extremely exciting and groundbreaking, right? I mean, it really is. It really is. This is it's not just an exercise we're going to go back and give some feedback to somebody. This is, this is real. This is a big deal. As a board, we can already feel the, impact, the, the power of the resolution that was made by this new board. 
developers coming forward say, hey, we got this great vision, great plan. Well, time out. We're not sure we agree with it. And that's what we're doing here. Okay. All right, so if no more questions, we'll get into what we're gonna do next week, right? So uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna do the vision hearing piece. So the good news is we have another chance to, to go back and, and think about it if we want to, but I'm really looking forward to that piece. Um, you know, really kind of a painted picture. What does it look like? What does it sound like, right? What, it, what does it feel like to be in Cornelius in 2042, right? And uh, so it gives us another chance to go back and, and look at that if you want to. We'll definitely cover that next week. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to take the first quadrant of the map. So we're splitting Cornelius up into four sections. Wayne, what would you say the best quadrant would be for us to take from, just go from left to right all the way all the way across the town? That's probably good. We can start the uh, northwest quadrant. All right, can we, let's show them <coughs> what area that we're going to be looking at. We might have to give them pull out a little bit so they can see what we're looking at. Sure, we, we're going to rezone Dennis's neighborhood. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. yeah, right. And some, some of it might, some of the, sometimes some of what we do might be easier and we might get into some quadrants that are going to be a lot harder. So, you know, this may be, you think that's about the, the quadrant? You know, I think what makes this one uh, yeah. or the easy part, when you look at the peninsulas, uh, you, again, I don't want to steer you, but they're single family. There's not much we can do to change those. So a lot of your thought might be, well, what do we want West Catawba to be? What do we want Jaton Extension, Septon, uh, and all the little feeder streets, Bethel Church, uh, One Norman, uh, that whole area, and uh, Fred's neighborhood. Uh, Westmoreland, Westmoreland Road is yeah. the one that's really got me all squeaked up. So this is gonna. So we're not starting off easy, guys. There's a lot in this one because there's a lot of decisions coming up in these in these areas. Are right. infill projects also something that we will talk about? Should sure. they'll still have to meet the planning the, the land use plan. The ability to not take a left turn out of my neighborhood really worries me. So. Um, it's fine. It's right. well, it's kind of we'll, we're in the same boat. Right? <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll send you a uh, snapshot of the actual area that we're going to cover. You'll get that in your email box. Okay. And then what we're going to do, guys, just, you know, literally, we're going to have a map like that up on the board. We're going to have some land use designations. It's going to say, like, you know, single family uh, residential or whatever. You're going to take those stickers and you're going to literally. Put it all over the mass. Okay. Yeah. So over the next uh, two weeks until the next meeting, once you see what area we're covering, you can focus on your thoughts on this area. And when we're done doing each of the four areas, just so you know, we will take a look at the map as a whole, right? So if we end up, you know, we might end up real heavy on something all the way across. We're like, wow, we don't need all that all the way across Cornelius. Right? So we'll have to do another iteration. When we see what we've done, we may need to iterate again on the, on the map as a whole. And that's okay. Right? That's totally okay. But we're going to try to bring it down to a little bit of focus because there's no way we can do the whole town, you know, at, in, at a time. Right? I mean, what I would add, though, Michael, is if, if you do keep the larger in mind, the larger picture sure. of what you sure. want the town, you, I mean, you, you're going to focus on one area, but how does, it, does that contribute to your vision? Are we a lake town? Are we going to be known for the arts and sciences? You know, are there more parks and dog parks that can be fit into certain areas? You know, so what is the vision as the overall town, and how would that quadrant support that vision? You know, and per Wayne's comments earlier, and this is this is really important. Just because something's there today doesn't mean it's going to be there tomorrow. So it might not change. You know, if we change land use from what it is today to what it's going to be tomorrow, it may not change anything today, but it may impact what's there tomorrow, right? So, and that's that's what we have to look at this, right? So even though a lot of this is already built upon, we still want to designate it as something for future use or what we want to do for it. I saw that firsthand in Charlotte today, you know, driving down Looking at well, my favorite restaurant used to be right here. Now it's an office building. You know, 
uh, the whole look of that street on Morgan Street changed from what I remember. Mm -hmm. So there, there is that. You know, you think about five to seven years sets us in motion for the next 20. What, um, for, this just personally, I will miss the next meeting, which I hate, but I'll be out of the country. Um, and, but I would like to be able to see what's happening. Is there a way this, I don't know if anybody else is going to miss any of the meetings, but. That's a camera right there. And it's uh, being recorded. It's being recorded. Very good. And these will, and as soon as this meeting's over, IT will be posting it. And if you go on our website, there's a landing page for this group. So that will be posted there for all citizens to see, and we want to see comments that they make back. And as Mr. Commissioner Osborne noted, um, I don't know how Maylin's going to do this. Maylin's our communications manager, but after every meeting, she's going to ask two of you to talk about what we did and to refer back to the video and tell folks what we did today. Um, so Maylin will be in touch with you, and you'll all get an opportunity to do that. Yeah, we'll put it on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get real. All right, that's uh, unless you know, open to more questions. But I'm, I'm done. I'll give you five minutes of your life back early yeah. if, if you don't have any more questions. But I'll stick around if anyone has any individual questions. Um, really looking forward. Kelly, sorry you're not going to be here for the next one. Kelly, since you're not going to be here, do you want to share your vision? Can you do that? Oh my goodness. You want, I hate to put you on the spot, but you're not going to be here. No, I love to hear yeah, it. I'll be there. Um, right, is, is everyone okay with and that? And I also want to say that I missed an earlier email asking for this, so I just oh. got it with the reminder day okay. or yesterday, right. which made it a little tricky. That's all right. All right, so um, for me, working toward medium, somewhere between medium and large um, growth, in 20 years, Cornelius will be pedestrian and biking friendly with pockets of inviting streetscapes, great restaurants and community green spaces for gathering. It will take a clear long-term vision and town plan, updated policies and a land use plan that supports thoughtful decision-making and the power to work more effectively with developers. Parks and Rec, improved public safety and connectivity, ensuring greenways and bike paths that connect all our citizens east, west, north and south abundant green spaces, economic development, um, prioritizing a strategic balance for smart commercial, which we've talked about, and industrial zoning for job creation and tax revenue, preparation for light rail and station uh, considered when approving development projects. Uh, there's, I, I envision in 2042 a new I-77 interchange exit at Bailey Road, Westmoreland. Um, strategic tax increases over the 20 years have been supported by the majority of citizens because leaders take time to educate the citizens of Cornelius. Um, west of I-77, I'm not so familiar with the needs of West of I-77, so I look forward to learning more from others. Um, but the idea of more waterfront mixed-use options on the west side um, with bike walk connectivity is, is important. I see east of I-77 becoming an arts district, um, totally walkable and inviting. Um, and until the light rail is in sight, town leaders do not uh, approve any new high density developments within a mile radius of town center. Attractions are things like the Kane Arts Center, a big community green space where Cashins currently is, um, used for live music and other events, specialty shops, pubs, great restaurants, Planned parking is easy, trolley pubs and bike rentals make it easy to navigate the art, art district and surroundings. Um, beginning as soon as possible, any multi-family housing developments approved must offer a percentage of affordable housing options to ensure work life, um, uh, work livability and social diversity. Um, the community attracts quality police and fire because we pay a rate competitive with the surrounding area, and our police spend a lot of time in our neighborhoods getting to know our community. Um, the privately owned driveway that crosses the railroad tracks beside Ace Hardware in the next 20 years has become a public road leading um, directly from 115 over to 
wherever it connects, Zion South, Walnut Street area, and eases the pressure on the surrounding neighborhoods and intersections. Um, all streets, including 115, have prominent crosswalk markings and signage to ensure pedestrian safety and right of way. Thanks for sharing and being brave to, to be the first one <laughs> to make the first one to go, especially with the Yeah, I'll look for it to hearing it. I'm just on the street though. I just got the assignment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, okay. That's good. Thank you. All right. I'm not gonna keep you guys up. Uh, so Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much. Appreciate it. Much. Next so meeting is April twenty first at four thirty. Oh, I thought it was a month from today. Mm -hmm. So you went without Oh, I'll be here. Thank you. You need to share it again. Oh, my God. Whoever gets hurt, her. Whoever gets hurt, her. Whoever gets hurt, her. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Well, you know what raises a good question. So we're meeting every two weeks, right? Yeah. Well, there's, there's, that, there's a couple where like three right. you do scheduling, but you should all have them on your calendars, and we'll do reminders uh, as we come up. But the next one is April 21st. And we will send out the map to the quadrant that we're going to work on for you guys. Great. Okay. Awesome. 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 Thanks, all. Thank you. Actually, I'll, um, I'll be with you on the phone. Okay. Um,